About 10 years ago, the farmer's brother, who's very interested in history, um, was looking on Google Earth and he saw a great big, um, what looked like um, a ditched enclosure of some kind, so it's a subcircular feature. Uh, he then reported that to the county archaeologist and the county archaeologist um, got a team together, they came on the site, they did some field walking. Um, also we had um, Dick, Dick Nesbitt Dufour, who's one of the MA students at Sussex University, um, doing his dissertation on aerial photography, took some fantastic photographs of the site. So we had a very clear, um, about 100 metres wide, ditched enclosure surrounding this little knoll. So we were on the summit, really, of a very small knoll. Um, and when they did the field walking, they were finding Roman pottery, prehistoric flints, and certain little deposits in certain areas. So this gave us um, a bit of a target to put the trenches in. And obviously, we then came and did some geophysics. So we were able to hopefully establish where the actual ditch lie, and we, we put the trenches across in that area. It's mainly pottery. Um, we haven't found a great deal of this, but the type of pottery that we have got is obviously very invaluable because we can date it. Um, so most of these pieces that we're finding here are from the Roman period. Um, some of them are what we call East Sussex ware, which come from a kiln site just south of um, Chailey, so about five kilometres distance from here. Um, so this type of pottery is very generic in the area and it does span from the late Iron Age um, up to the Roman period. We've got a nice little decorated piece here, so there may be one or two imports. Um, we've also got some bits, shards of pottery that have probably been locally made and fired on the spot. We really, what we call this kind of dig is a training dig. So instead of it being a research dig, which may be answering lots of research questions and um, linked to a university, um, we're actually from the Sussex School of Archaeology. So what we're doing is running excavation training here. Um, we're doing various more specialised day schools. So this week we've had a student over from Singapore um, with our environmental expert, Dr Michael Allen, and they've been fitting together the wider story of the enclosure and looking at the environmental aspects. Um, we've also had some students doing excavation training, which is a week-long course. Um, last weekend we had photography for archaeologists. This weekend we've got excavation for beginners, and then in the final week we, we're doing section and plan drawing with Jane Russell. So we, we've had a whole host of different courses running on the site, um, as, as well as volunteer diggers coming and actually digging the archaeology for us. It's absolutely essential because last year the adult education department which included the archaeology department at Sussex University, the CCE department, was unfortunately disbanded so the whole of the adult education programme has now gone. So that means that people locally can't go and get training anywhere else in archaeology. It also means they can't just come and volunteer and um, do a bit of digging if it's not courses they're after then they might want to just come and dig. So for the local community to just be involved, which we, we have encouraged, is, is absolutely essential. So there are no other educational institutions um, nearby that, that are offering these sort of courses and opportunities. So um, we are having an open day next week for the locals as well. So we've had a few, quite a lot of local people coming up and being involved in the dig as well. So essential. We need more courses, we need more archaeologists and it would be really, really good to inspire the new generation. Um, I think that's essential as well, as long as it's done responsibly. So you, you can get two different camps of metal detectorists. We have um, a chap called Robin who comes and does the metal detecting for us here on site. He's very responsible. So if he finds anything, he will inform the portable antiquity scheme. 
and they're based at Barbican House in Lewis. So if anyone finds any interesting objects, it needs to be reported, and he certainly does that. So the database for Sussex is, is growing um, on a weekly basis, and thanks due mostly to metal detectorists in the area. So they report it. The county archaeologists then may pick that up and then we have sort of more research targets and we can go out and do geophysics and actually build the much, much bigger picture. So without metal detectorists, a lot of these sites wouldn't be found at all. Um, however, obviously, you have the night hawkers who are not responsible and who are essentially destroying the archaeology. So it's, it's very much um, two different sides of, of a big coin. Yeah. Definitely. I think, you know, we're not very good at getting the information out there. I think it's something we want to do as archaeologists. We want to involve the community. We want people to, to be involved and to come along and dig and to learn about their history. Um, but we're just not very media savvy. So I, I think it's, it's something we, particularly the school, needs to, to get a handle on and we need to get that message out there. So We've put stuff out on the website, we've got a Facebook page, we've got a Twitter page now, so um, the information is getting out there slowly. But I suppose the other problem is if you haven't got the sensational finds, what do you do? We haven't got Richard III in the car park here. Um, the, the archaeology is quite ephemeral, so even if people come and visit, they're perhaps not quite understanding what they're looking at. Um, but yes, there definitely needs to be more community involvement and, and we do feel quite passionate about that, but I suppose we, we don't know the right channels to go down um, in terms of getting the information out there, but um, we, we do the best we can, but I know it's perhaps not good enough.